Well, it's a very good morning at the next Media Park. It's the morning breeze for you um, as we kick off our Monday, our week with politics. Uh, this morning we'll be taking stock of a number of things that have taken center stage in national politics. There's a bit of political melodrama, a bit of suspense, and um, a bit of worrying trends that are emerging. Well, on one hand, Last week, the NRM's parliamentary caucus, uh, while meeting the top organs of the party and the president, deferred the rationalization of uh, uh, MDAs, agencies of uh, government that were meant to be either collapsed or done away with. Uh, the, the process has been put on hold. What does this mean? On the other hand, uh, the country is awash with uh, mixed reactions regarding the ongoing spat between uh, the president's son, General, General Mohozi Kainerugaba, and the son-in-law, uh, who is also a presidential advisor, Odrek Rabogo. Well, over the weekend, there were quite a number of interesting or arousing exchanges on, 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 on uh, social media spaces. What is this speaking to? Is the center holding? Could there be a war brewing within the palace? We'll be talking about this. We'll also be looking at uh, the unresolved Chito Chitezi issue together with the expulsion of two diplomats over misconduct. One was accused of uh, engaging herself in partisan politics. Well, she went openly on the streets to confront uh, supporters of the opposition in Canada, while another is being accused of turning the embassy into a casino. Very interesting developments. What do all these mean? While at one side, on the other side, there's also been um, uh, news about parliament blocking Sechikubo's petition. So has it been dealt the final blow? And what does this mean? Well, this morning I'm joined by Honorable uh, Eddie Quizera, Member of Parliament from Kimberley County. And along the way, we'll be joined by uh, Honorable Daudi Kamanda, uh, Member of Parliament for Kasambia County and Secretary General of uh, PLU, plus a political analyst, Dr. Yusuf Serunkuma. They will also be sharing their perspective and insights with us. A very good morning, Honorable Quiz, and nice to have you this good morning. Good morning, and good morning, listeners. Well, how did, uh, I believe you attended the caucus meeting with the president. Yes. How did you arrive at the decision to defer um, the, 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 the rationalization process? Uh, Mr. Anjara and the listeners, this rationalization has been on the table in, a, in the public for quite some time. Six years to be exact. Six years now. But uh, although, of course, you introduce us as uh, members of parliament, you know when you introduce people now in the country that these are members of parliament, people already formed an opinion that uh, these may be uninformed and uh, corrupt, and they are not listening to the public. So already the perception on parliament uh, is not a good one. So I would appeal to the media and the other people responsible to keep on uh, airing out the right things. Right. So that we get a balanced debate. Mm. So although I'm not a spokesman for parliament or a spokeswoman, but you're equal or a spokesperson for government, I will address this one as an informed person at the mm. level of, uh, in my private work, I do consultants and strategic management services mm. as the principal consultant. Mm. So when I'm looking at RAPEX, I am not looking at it from a political lens. I want to look at it as a, at a consultancy level. Mm. And what is wrong with it? Why did it stay for a long time? Rationalization cannot be an event where you say today we rationalize and rationalization takes place. So rationalization in the event, it should be a process. And those actions or processes must be informed by a study. So people would be discussing the study or the report out of the study which was never done at professionally. This one, I, am, I, ha, I have an authority to talk about it because we asked the minister 
of, responsible for public service and the rationalization. We said, can you present to this parliament a study that was based on to take this uh, shift of having uh, um, uh, uh, agencies of government, both the corporations and the authorities, where did you base? My friend Moruli Mukasa did not present any study. What he presented was a working document from the Minister of Public Service. But Parliament approved. No, no, I'm now, I, I, I am now telling you that. Mm. That's actually what happened. So based on that, government convinced members of Parliament and said, there is a duplication here, and there is excess expenditure here, which expenditure we are now short of in other sectors. So whereas there are money being spent here, and it is being duplicated in other agencies of government, these ones can be done. So Parliament received the report, processed all the bills, mm -hmm. and then Parliament in its wisdom found that about 10 plus were found that these ones were critical agencies of government that were implementing government programs or they serve the interest more. So that's what happened. But for the case of the caucus in Entebbe, there was more listening. And this listening came up that, hey, have we involved the public in, a, in a determining either to rationalize or, or some? So it was in the wisdom of the caucus that uh, let us now involve the public. What does it mean is that Article 9 of the Constitution says that Parliament shall operate through co co committees of Parliament. Right. Because the members of, of the public cannot be invited in, the par in Parliament, but they can be invited in the committees of Parliament to listen to their views, the original views of the people. Because if you are going to talk about people involved in the coffee sector, in the microfinance, the tire city, you are going to look at the National Forest Authority, you are going to look at the diary. Now, they said, let us go a step from government. Now you go beyond uh, members of parliament who people perceived that they could have been influenced not to pass them. But, but, but well, now well, the okay. public is like if an you, appeal. If, if you could explain this mm. irony to me. Mm. Already parliament has made approvals. Yes. Already parliament has passed the bills. Five. Are they five of them? No, many of them. They many. Were many. Yes. For five rationalization. Four. Yes. And now you're, you're working backwards. No, this is not working backwards. In an organization, when a decision is taken, the people who feel the, the decision is wrong, they can petition the same people who have capacity to review their decisions. In the event that there was some information that was not available at the time they were making that decision. So in this case, when the government comes and says, you parliament, I want this thing to be done. Although you did it, but there's some more information that you did not have when you were rejecting the, those bills. So who between government and parliament, mm. who between the executive and parliament mm. was acting in haste on this rationalization and why? The primary players are Minister of Finance and the public, public Service. So we cannot talk about the president because the president uses those ones to implement his mandate. So now, if he comes back at parliament, or government comes back at parliament, and he says, now, involve the people more through committees, so parliament is going to invite the public. If you have not listened to members of parliament decision, you cannot fail to listen to the public. So suppose the public now comes and he says, we want this. So can parliament go against it? Can the executive go against it? So where we are is that now we want to involve more in the public, like you, you can come there and give your views. Mm. So that now those views are harmonized and taken back to parliament and they are formally addressed. That's what I think is going to be done. It will be a, a, a richer decision. So what, what initially drove this hype, the enthusiasm that we saw MPs speaking with about the need for rationalization of these agencies? You see, the need for rationalization of agencies was uh, on the basis of uh, the duplication of mandates. That was one. Secondly, it was in a situation where there is a shortfall in the budgets, and you find there is double expenditures. That was another problem. So government thought that if we now rationalize, we now cut costs 
and eliminate redundant resources or redundant force, and we deploy it where it's supposed to be and where it can produce better. That's what the government came well, up with. There was a moment when MPs were being accused of picking bribes here and there to spare some of the agencies. <laughs> uh, to the best of my knowledge is that uh, I don't know of any MP or members of parliament who received the money to, to influence what was made. Because if they give you as a member of parliament in a house of 500 members, you cannot now <laughs> get a representative corruption. That when I get money, I will do it like that. That one has been a perception. You know, in Uganda, they are, corruption needs another description. There is the perceptions. And okay. there is, do you worry like, that parliament is always perceived as corrupt? No, everybody is in Uganda, everybody in Uganda, when he does not get what he wants, manage, expectation of, uh, man, expectation of, but this management of expectations is the one that at the time say, I was supposed to go to court and win a case. I didn't win, the judge ate money. Parliament was supposed to go my way, it didn't go my way, they ate money. So much of it is perceived corruption. Because we have agencies which can arrest them if they are given sufficient information. Well, very interesting. Uh, before we delve into another subject, there is uh, an ongoing story, a developing story. FDC today will be going in for a, FDC Katonga, to be specific, will be going in for a delegates conference mm. to make the final decision on whether to form a new party, to break ranks with the old party, to reconcile. Quite a number of options are on the table, but what do things look like on the ground ahead of the delegates conference at Katonga? We have Shamim Nabakoza on the ground. A very good morning, Shamim. Uh, is there any semblance of some bit of hype or it's likely to be a flop? Simon, good morning to you. I am coming to you live from the activism office of the Forum for Democratic Change, Katonga, which you have talked about. Yes, the delegates are already gathered here, many. We cannot talk about the number. We cannot count 2,000, but we can say we, about a number, about 1,000, could be gathered here, and others are still coming in if they can be able to take you around to show you. Just in my background, the individuals who are gathered and already seated here at Katonga waiting the day's agenda, which many have come to know as formation of a new political party. But what we have been told so far is that for as long as that delegates conference has not yet sat and no resolution has come out of that, it is still Forum for Democratic Change delegates conference is still here. What is critical of the things we have seen here are colors that are for Forum for Democratic Change, but a little bit different of the colors we have seen. We see a little more royal blue. If you're able to see from those that are done in the colors, you're able to see that. You're able to see a, a, a little bit of, uh, of placards and, 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 and guidance of what it is today, which reads to the Forum for Democratic Change Delegates Conference thematic on refocusing the forces of change and to the struggle of freedom. And that is what is going to shape our discussion this morning with the Honorable Sam Junganda, who is a spokesperson of the Forum for Democratic Change based in Katonga. Certainly we know there is a faction still in Najanan Kumbi formerly, or still the headquarters of the Forum for Democratic Change. And we want to understand from him first how he's dressed. Honorable, mm -hmm. a very good morning to you. And we want to understand you're dressed in uh, blue and white. Others still in blue royal and white. Are these significant of the new party? What should we pick of this? We have uh, taken a decision to form a new party informally during consultative meetings. Today we formally make that decision because the consultative meeting involved everybody that you see here, but they were informal in nature. So the formal sitting today with the delegates is to actually ratify a proposal they have themselves made, so which is just a ceremony. Because we are a new group in construction, these colors most likely are going to be our colors when we register them with the electoral commission. So the decision today is to formally make a decision that we are a new group. Like a newborn, then we will baptize that new kid with a name with the colors and then we will formally write to the electoral commission to gazette these colors. But from now onwards, you're going to see us in this color, white and blue. You're gathered as FTC, yes, to make that decision. But one would wonder, oftentimes it has been hard to register new formation. 
the NUP had its own challenges in registering <coughs> as a party or changing from NURP and then to NUP. What do you foresee with your own? What you would see, think the, probably? The, the, the trouble with Ugandan, they don't go deeper looking at issues. The same people who will tell you that Museven will not register the party, they are sure that Museven will register them as candidates. There is absolutely no reason why the Electoral Commission, once the requirements are met, will not register a new party. When they attempted to refuse to nominate Dr. Kiza in 206 because he was in Ruzira, we forcefully made them register him. In fact, the, the, the nomination was of his portrait. He was in Ruzira. I am not one of those who have any doubt that once I have met the requirements, the Electoral Commission will have no choice but to register this party. And I am going to work on the requirements, very simple requirements. 50 signatures from two-thirds, from each of the two-thirds of the districts of Uganda, I'm about just about 100 or even less. Once we have that, I am sure the Electoral Commission and the Electoral Commission, you are hereby notified, you will have to register this party. Do you want to say the party is not already registered or not already formed? <coughs> One we, would we, think we, you have already. Today, the decision, yes, has been made, but what will follow are the processes. Even the FDC itself, the first decision was to form the party and then the subsequent processes involved with the registration and so on. So today, once that formal decision has been taken, then we will write formally to the Electoral Commission, go through the process as outlined in the Political Parties and Organization Act. What you begin with is to notify the Electoral Commission of the name, of the symbol and colors. And if they don't violate any provisions of the Political Parties and Organizations Act, then the Electoral Commission will proceed to verify the signatures of the promoters of the new party. And that is something that can be done even under a month. So I think by around September, we may have to invite the country back here when we are launching a new party now, with its color, with its symbols, and everything. You're launching, yes, a new party, but could it be immune to the challenges that you faced in the Forum for Democratic Change, where you are still a member, even after notification? I am, I am a very optimistic person, and I keep telling people there are thousands of Ugandans who, especially in the setup we are in, who come to Kampala every day looking for money. They don't get it, but the following day they will be on their own. So the <coughs> cost for field of will go on. Here, where we are in Katonga, 2011, we formed a group called the Action for Change to protest. Museven took it over. The following day, we formed for God and my country. And we had even a third name if you had taken over this one. Because Museven cannot take over the multi these people that you see here in their hundreds, what he does is take over one Semuju and the name of a party. You then shift into another group. So I, I am not fearful. Even if Museven comes tomorrow to take over a new party, we will abandon the name abandon the color, form a new one. Because the population, he can't compromise everybody. He can compromise a few leaders. What then happens after you have notified the Electoral Commission, yes, if it agrees or not agree, what is your next course of action? They have no option but to agree once the requirements are made. Once the Electoral Commission, because you're going to do this concurrently, once the decision is taken here like it will today, what will follow is registration but also mobilization. And we have convinced ourselves what we are seeking to form is not just a sanctuary for people who have been at Kato, I mean at Najanankun, that we are just providing a sanctuary for them. You're going to go out on an aggressive mobilization to recruit every year one million Ugandans turn 18. My assumption is that they belong to no party. So we'll go out, go in secondary schools, go in universities, go to villages to recruit more new members because I am 52 this year. Maybe I am making the last contribution before I grow old. I don't think I want to be in seven or Mugabe. So these young people that will recruit, they will be the ones to run and grow and develop this party. Thank you very much, Honorable Samuja, for speaking to us. Thank uh, you. Simon Kagwanjala, that's what's happening here at Katonga, but we shall be sure to bring you up to speed with the details because we see several individuals, those that have been known for being part of PAFO, being part of the different for us that made up the Forum for Democratic Change are all gathered here and what we can only wait for is that resolution and what it presents as a party name at the end of the day and also, and also to substantiate whether actually the party is not already in registration, whether it's a purchase or it's a creation and formation of a new political party. Back to you at the Political Command Center. Well, very interesting conversations. Uh, <laughs> could this be a new dawn in the politics of the country? 
could it die on arrival? Uh, what are the stakes now? We'll be delving into that. But there is also news, very sad, of uh, the passing away of Dr. Chidu Makubuya, the former Attorney General. Um, he succumbed to illness at uh, Nakasero Hospital, where he's been admitted for a number of weeks. May his soul rest in peace, and we'll keep you posted on further details about the story. Well, we're also joined by Yusuf Serunkuma, a political analyst, uh, a writer himself, and a social critic. Well, good to have you, Yusuf. Thank you for having me, sir. And uh, <clears throat> as you got in here, there was an interview about FDC Katonga now coming up with a new formation. What's your take on this new move? I, I just wish they didn't form a political party because I think uh, the, what they suffered under FDC is not too far away from them. The same illness will meet them wherever they're going and they'll be afflicted to, again, a near extinction because as you can imagine, Simon, this is the national condition that what, what we call political parties are not really political parties in the ordinary sense. And under an autocracy that has really entrenched itself, you don't fight it through more organizing. We have had this conversation before, and I've said the more you organize, the easier it is for uh, the man you supposedly want to depose to overthrow you, to make it difficult for you to fight him. Yeah, but as we head to 2026, <coughs> don't you think this would be a new force to reckon with? Uh, if their target is the election, then uh, I think it's, it's, it's a misconceived uh, diagnosis of the problem. Because our problem is not winning an election. Uh, because if you form a political party and you want to contest against Mr. Mseveni, he will definitely win an election if he stands. Mr. Mseveni can lose an election if he stood alone. So if they are planning to stand against him, they will definitely lose against Mr. Mseveni. Sorry, Be Mr. Mseveni? He can only lose if he stood alone. But if you stand against him, you give him victory. So he will win. If the intention is to stand and become members of parliament on the new ticket, not as independents, uh, you know, as we have debated before, parliament is the bribe. So if they are thinking about contributing to this country, if they think about making reforms in this country, you don't organize elections, you don't stand for parliament. Because once you enter parliament, someone has bribed you already from just you standing to join that house. Well, uh Honorable Quiz, do you buy into these reservations from Yusuf? You know, Yusuf has not declared the, his future interests. So a, now that, a better Uganda. Now that Yusuf has not declared his future interests, I don't know where he's going. <clears throat> so, but he all know about Katonga and FDC. Uh, in the political development, you can see there is a disintegration of organized groups. When you see FDC, it has its roots in NRM. That's what I, that's my perception. And then when it went to become Forum for Democratic Change, it got organized. Later on, it got disorganized. It gave birth to Aunt General Munto's party. Mm. Now, after giving birth to Mujisha Munto's party, now they are moving to different directions. Now here, we are looking at another party being <coughs> formed. Uh, but uh, to me, I see they have not addressed the issue of the conflict, but they are going to have more conflicts by forming another political party. Because the conflicts are not internal to the political party. The uh, no, what I'm saying is that you see there are conflicts which are known and unknown. Not necessarily from outside, but even from inside. The members of uh, different organizations have declared and undeclared or disclosed and disclosed strategic objectives. And some people are being driven where they don't know. Okay. This when, is what Mr. When, when uh, you look at the Kagame personalities. Said. You see the President Kagame, I want to tell you what he said last time. Kagame says, when you continue following people, you should reach at a certain <coughs> level and you ask them, by the way, where are you taking me? How, why should I continue following Njara every time, every time? At another time, I should ask, by the way, Njara, where are we going? That's what uh, President Kagame said, that even when you are following a madman, 
There is a level where you reach and say, by the way, where are you taking me? Because you might be taking me in a direction that does not serve my interest or the public interest. Okay. What, what, what is notable here mm. are the personalities, the key protagonists now. Mm. Kano Besige, <coughs> Waswa Virigwa, um, Semuju, very accomplished politicians mm. who are hitherto the pillars mm. of FDC. Would this suggest to you that Najan Nkumbi is now going off the radar? Yeah, but he, me as a member of NRIM, as a member of NRIM, there is the NRIM as a party, there is the government of Museveni. So we as a political party, when the, the other party is disorganized, it is to our advantage because we recruit more. We are going to recruit. Uh, but Simon. as a government, Simon. government shouldn't be happy <coughs> to see organizations which are disorganized. Simon, no, yes. but as a member of NRM, Museveni yes. is on the record to having told us that he's sworn to tear down all political parties. He, he actually gave us a timeline. He said by 2026. No, did he talk as a chairman of NRM? Uh, or uh, he talk as a president? As a president. No, as a president. Okay. Well, when does he hard. talk as chairman? Let's forget this. This, this gymnastics should not really not bother <laughs> us here. Whether yes. he's talking as president or mm. talking as chairman of NRM, there's clearly no difference. Mm. The only reason for NRM is still a thing called NRM, I don't know what you're resisting, mm. it's because you have access to money and, and guns. Mm. And everybody who is in that party is there for the money, not for any political ideological reasons. Mm. But the point which should be built is this, that mm. we don't have a political party in Uganda because parties are built on ideological grounding. Yes. Neither of these things, masquerading as political parties, have an ideological underpinning. You agree with that? Including the NRM. Mm. You should be able to agree that including the NRM. What we have are camouflage organizations, uh, what Nobat Mao called mill card uh, political parties. And I agree, and in, uh, I think Nobat Mao is the chairman of the DP and also a minister in your, your government. Mm. The things you are calling political parties, the conflicts that wreck them apart mm. are often inter external because your man. So, uh, um, no, your before, man. before you go far, mm. do I take it that in Uganda we don't have political parties? We don't. Because let your me man. Now, let me bring something to you. Mm. We have a constitution that provides that Uganda will be... No, we're, we're not discussing oh, yes, the law. We're wait. not discussing the law. We're oh, not discussing wait. the law. Then we have the act of parliament mm. Mm. saying that we have political parties which must be registered and uh, even get funding from government through the electoral commission. So are you saying that uh, that money that they get from the electoral commission mm. is, actually over is a 50 billion, is a bribe. which they give political parties, is a bribe. the DP gets money, mm. Gemma gets money, NRM gets money, yes. uh, NUP gets money, you are now saying those are not political parties. No. You are lecturing in Makere. You have a constitutional court. Why haven't you challenged them in court? Okay. I mean, this is the drama that when you live on an, an autocracy... No, but you cannot... Uh, okay. okay. Will you allow him <laughs> to let me, respond? Let me, let me give you a please, critique. Please give me a chance. So we have a drama mm. and an autocracy. This is the Katemba now. Uh, you, you let me make my point. Yes. So we have a, we have a thing which masquerades as a political party, rather as, as a democracy. So mm. you, you spell out the things under which democracies operate. But I should tell you about modern autocracies, the autocracies of our time. They took lessons from Idi Amin, from Bokasa, from Mobutu Seko. They now masquerade under the, uh, the technocracies of a democracy. So they organize elections. They have a seemingly vibrant uh, electoral commission. They have an, a noisy and oversized parliament. But they w that's how they reproduce themselves. They have a thing called the constitution. They change it when and they want. That's how modern technocracies operate. It's not, it's not, I'm not attacking you, I'm not attacking your political party, but if mm. you study modern autocracies across this continent, the way they reproduce themselves is through the facade of a democracy. But so what you're telling me... Would the message share the same view with you? Maybe he does. And why maybe would you he, Maybe he doesn't, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not message's voice. Mm. Uh, would no so what, 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 what you've view? just spelled out for me mm. is the characteristics of a modern autocracy. Mm. Well, it I, masquerades as democracy. If you could allow me now shift. But it's not a personal it, it, If you can let me shift it, gears. It's, it's, uh, we, we, we're joined <laughs> by the Secretary General of PLU, uh, the Patriotic League of Uganda, and Member of Parliament for Kasambia County, Honorable Daud Kabanda. Thank you for joining us. No, it's very right honorable for the Secretary General. <laughs> Thank you, Simon, for hosting me this morning. Well, good to have you. Um, what is hot on the hills now is... Uh, the Twitter outburst by your boss. Is he angry? Is he just 
uh, frustrated? Is he exploding? Is he jealous? Eh? Jealous as the as the son in law Now they are taking over your job. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, thank you, Simon, and all the viewers. Uh, first of all, Honorable Quizera asked my brother here, Serum Kuma, that the president was talking in the capacity of uh, president or chairman NRM. Now mm -hmm. you're asking me. I don't know whether he was tweeting in that capacity of chairman Patriotic League of Uganda or as CDF. Because now when you ask me issues that concern... Okay, the when you read between the lines, mm -hmm. what exactly, what point is Buhozi trying to make? Take away his, uh, his peeps, <coughs> his, his see, titles. You see, for you, you have, I think the media has decided to concentrate on Muhozi. But what you should know that Muhozi has been attacked for some time. Since the days of, uh, you remember when the, he joined the army? Mm. They said he had fraudulently joined the army. He, 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 was, he didn't join the army through proper channels. Even after joining the army, then they said, you remember the Mohoz project of Tinyefuz and all the others? This has been attacking him. And for you, when he speaks, are you aware that, uh, have you watched this video of uh, the Absalom something? Did you watch it of last year? I think one year ago. When he was attacked, did you pay much attention to it? It was a veiled attack, but here he is now go going bare knuckle with his uh, brother-in-law. But for you want to say that when Mhozi is attacked, he should not talk. And when he says something, then it's making news and it's surprising. And then this one says he's frustrated. He has been attacked. No, the, the brother-in-law said. He, he's, he's been attacked. But... You leave the brother-in-law, we, we shall have him for another day. Because when he says entitlement and he's a coward, a coward and a general in the same statement, does it make sense to you, Simon? <laughs> a coward and a general in the same statement. A general of a UPD. Now the general comes out to, to declare his brother-in-law as the <clears throat> biggest thief. I, I don't know about that. But of course he must have been following events in Uganda. Have you ever seen General Mohozi, unless you say he doesn't have access to the president, parading investors? General Mohozi parading investors. He's a member of parliament, at least, and I, I, I believe he has a constituency where he went and participated in that by election. He has a ground. Have you ever seen him, Honorable Kwizera here, parading investors, taking them to the president? Today you are in coffee. And that money, you get it from parliament. You are drawing funds from the consolidated fund. You have an office <coughs> which is funded by the, 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 the taxpayers. I am the secretary general of Patriotic League of Uganda. I challenge anybody. At least I know that fellow, the one you are talking about, has access to information. <coughs> if he can provide information that the Patriotic League of Uganda is funded by government, I... His offices do receive, because I sit in the budget committee, I sit in parliament. Uh, we have Yusuf, does this pass off as a palace war of some sort? No, and why should Ugandans be swayed by it? It's an old gamble by... Uh, no, by Simon, you have not you're, you're given... Coming. No, you're no, coming. no, 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 you have not given me enough time. Unless you, you, you and him have uh, a syndicate, you want him to say something. Because when you say, you asked me about General Mohose. And I had not concluded on this, unless you say you are going to give me Okay, this. I'll give you a couple of minutes, yes. Okay. General Mohozi, you and I must agree that he's been under attack. Are you aware of that? So is he clapping back? No, he's not clapping back. But when he's attacked, you don't say. You don't talk. You don't even say the man is fighting for Uganda. You remember when, he wa when they said he had died in, in Teso, that Sabre had killed him? And they asked the president, they told the president, your son has been killed. He said, it's good, he has died fighting for Uganda in caucus. Until it was discovered that he was still alive. So when he was fighting for Uganda, is that entitlement? What do these other people have to offer? At least for Honorable Kwizera, okay. he can stand in a constituency and win as a member of parliament. <coughs> what can they offer? Except hobonobing with some people. Please, when some of us keep quiet, 
you leave us to keep quiet. And when we decide to talk, okay. don't is say we are talking. you now going bare knuckle? We are not going bare knuckles, but we must respond to some people who say entitlement. What, what are the entitlements? Somebody joins the army, fights for you. For you, you just go. Parade is investors. Get, and they are exempted. You, you saw the recent one they were taking to Changkwans. Let's analyze this after the break. Good morning. Oh, you're saying that you're saying that I don't know what it was. On the political landscape. <laughs> Quite a number of things. But let, let's first focus on... Um, uh, the spot, the <laughs> MK spot. Uh, I'll begin with you, Yusuf. W when you read into the posts by the general, mm. who happens to be the CDF and the president's son, what do you read? <clears throat> so, first of all, there's an old gamble that uh, MK is positioning himself. Should calamity happen to my father, I should be able to appear as a man who has been going around the country and ready to take the presidency. That's the first gamble. And to achieve that gamble, among the other things he's done, he's going around the country, organizing, creating small units across the country, but also appearing like a member of the opposition. So this is why he's critical of corruption, he's critical of his father. Uh, the, I think I've, I've seen Kabanda here uh, blast Yoweri Museveni, call him a man without ideas and without a head and a tail, not sure what he's doing. The idea is to appear like the opposition so that they win the hearts and minds of those who are playing opposition politics. As the father is seriously killing opposition political parties, PLU is manufacturing Don't itself as, as an opposition political Let party. And among the other things they are doing... Serungu, I want you to withdraw that Simon, you need to... Please. I, I, I need to protect him. You I, come ha I have never said that the president doesn't have ideas. I uh, want you to withdraw that statement. No, I'm not going to withdraw. Well, okay. at you one can, time, go back at one time, yes. Yes. when you're on barometer, you said yes. the president has run out of ideas. No, well, I said... Samuel, I need to finish your point. No, 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 please. Okay, I, I, I'll give you time you for a rebuttal. No, 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 don't. He shouldn't misrepresent me. Because when he <laughs> says that Kabanda said the president doesn't have ideas, you're misrepresenting me. I have never said that. Okay, and we, I want okay. you to withdraw We can it. say you didn't say it, but members of PLU, you have said the president doesn't have ideas. He, not me. Don't okay, not me. you. Okay. Members right. of PLU have mm. said president have ideas. He presides over corruption, and MK is going to reform this country and curb the corruption. Mm. The entire idea is to manufacture themselves as the ones who are, are anti the failures of their father. So is it, is it making headlines? No, it doesn't have to make headlines, but it has to appear that they are positioning themselves as potential presidential material. So go around the country and also start to sound, the la speak the language that the people want to hear. Oppose whoever appears like a thief. So in, men, in the eyes of many Ugandans, Rabuk is a thief. In the, so it's not surprising that uh, the brother, the son, the brother I know, has joined the chorus which says Rabuk is a thief. It's not surprising, but the entire idea is to package themselves as members of the opposition. So the two things that are happening is the gamble that you know, I need to position myself as okay. somebody who's taking Do, do you dismiss the notion that there could what be a palace true. war inside? That, that, yes, that's the second point. That is also true. Because at that point when you see a family in, a, in absolute disarray, son-in-law against, rather brother-in-law against brother-in-law, son against father, there's absolute disarray in this family. But you see for the one inch like myself, that is exciting because, as I've argued before, what, the only way you, we are going to get into the next system of governance is that the, the, the demolition of the NRM has to come from the internal. It can't come from outside. It, it can't be opposed from outside. It has to be internally generated. So if Rango start at the core, because as you know, Mzavini's family has held this country hostage for a long time. At Makerere, we are held hostage by Mzavini's family. The son, one of the son-in-law is, is the head of commissioner, is the head of appointments board. Uh, another sister is the head of university council. Uh, the wife is the minister of education. The, the entire country is under occupation of this first family. Now, if the family starts to wreck itself apart, Ugandans should be like, yes, finally, maybe there is light at the end of the tunnel. But to return to uh, Mohoska and Irugaba, I have told you, Simon, that as CDF, he's in a very good position if he wants to become president. 
because his father respects nobody. To be, his father will never sit on the side and watch anybody take decisions in a position he currently occupies. If Muhozi, MK, wants to become president of this country, he has to show us. These small gambles of trying to appear like opposition politician don't make sense because he's not trained as an opposition politician. He, he can't appear on a show like this one and sit in this chair, Simon, and have him grilled. Yeah, you, I have you're said, not sure about this. He science. can't, he can't, you invite him and see if he'll show up. He'll send you commander. Because he doesn't have a voice. But if, but the only thing that he can do, which comes very natural to him, is if he, if he called his father. Simon. Overthink his father Sander. forcefully. Simon, have you ever, ever invited General Mohs for an interview? No, at, at least I haven't. You try to invite him. But for you, have you ever invited him? I am telling you. But for you, have you ever invited him? So Why Simon, would you say Simon, you Simon. can't invite him when he comes? Simon. He has, he has appeared. Oh on several interviews, unless you are not aware. Have you ever invited Simon, him? Simon, let me finish the point. Please, have the you point, ever invited uh, him and he, what, he, what, he never showed up? Where, where, what, where, where did he what, appear for an what, interview? What comes natural in to TV. him? In TV. Mm -hmm. And he was in a debate? Yes, he was. He were, because when I'm with you, it's a debate. What, what is more troublesome for me is whether he believes what he's saying. When I am with you, it's or, a debate. Or that he's actually saying this thing. OK, I, I, I want to get to quiz. Uh, mm. Honorable quiz leader, how do you unpack the anger that seems to be fermenting from the CDF and the president, who also happens to be the president's son, to the extent of blackmailing his brother-in-law. <laughs> the good thing you have said, the, the brother-in-law, and me as a, a member of parliament, cannot discuss the relationships. I have no capacity to discuss the relationship between a brother-in-law and a brother-in-law. But now the names of the prominent people who are coming in, mm. like uh, if Genome was, if it is true he communicated the way he did, uh, and then uh, the other one is Guab mm. You can see that that one is uh, perso personal issues. And uh, a member of parliament can uh, have an opinion on all of the things in the country, and even in the world. Would you but cannot casually comment treat them as possible? But cannot comment on everything. Because my comment can be taken as an authority somewhere, whereas the basis is not authoritative. So I would rather, they see the, if they're from the city, they have a spokesperson. Called, is it courageous? The spokesperson of the army. Because we take Mohs as a general in the army, and his communication must be made in that direction. Guabgogo uh, has... Guabgogo has a, is in president's office. He's a presidential advisor. And yeah. there is a, a government spokesperson. And nothing has been presented authoritatively to okay. be discussed. Uh, so me, I have no uh, capacity. Honorable Commander. What I'm saying, MK is, is, there, is I have no capacity lamenting about the continued incarceration of Mawanda, whom he declares as innocent. He's, he has not said he's innocent, but let me first respond to this. Where Honorable Quizzer is saying he's not in position to comment on these issues because he's Where in the Where they say relationships. Parents. Relationships, yes. yeah. Actually, we are the one who phrased the, this question and said the relationships. Why we are commenting on these issues? It is because these offices of the people you are, that you are talking about are being financed by Ugandans. They are not being financed by their money coming from their farms. Because I am a member of parliament, and I must comment on these issues. It's not because they are family, family, no. Mm -hmm. They drew money from the consolidated fund. Recently, we gave them 37 you billion. You gave it to who? To, 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 to Pasid of Ruawogo, which, which MK Pasid was talking about. As a government department? Pasid is yes. a government agency. Exactly, because MK, not Ruawogo's. MK never mentioned Ruawogo. He mentioned Pasid. So I am at liberty to talk about Pasid. But he attached a picture you, you see, of the biggest... But who's the, the chairman? Okay, okay, who's the he chairman of Pasid? My colleague, my colleague, colleague of knows. Oh, okay, well, if we, we, my we, colleague knows that mm. parliament passes the money. I don't want to... On, on behalf of Uganda. I don't want to... On behalf of Uganda. That's I don't, what he's I don't want yes. to go there, but let me give you some information about that money. Wait, I want to supplement what he said. Passing of Pasid funds may not necessarily be 100% by every member of parliament including maybe me and the honorary commander. But its usage is very important. But and remember, when you are talking about the money is given, parliament, finance, and the chief 
finance person okay. who is the president. Okay. Yes. So we look at that one in okay. that aspect. You, you want to come in? And also yes. We look yes. At let let, let, we, let we him come in. Let, let, let him come in. Yes. I just want to give him information that the 37 billion he's talking about that was passed by parliament was actually never passed by parliament. 37 it, billion? Yes. It was passed by parliament fraudulently because it came through the budget committee. Ruabogo himself appeared before us in Munyonyo. We rejected the money. It came on the floor of parliament. We rejected the money. It was smuggled into classified expenditure. They started saving Kavanda, this is personal, right? It's not personal. It's personal. How personal, sir? It, it speaks to a brewing conflict within the palace, no, within state absolutely house. Absolutely not. Because you see, when you say, when you gag this debate and say, don't talk about this because it's, it is... It's not personal, sir. It's not personal. No. This is... We are spending money. I told you I am a general secretary of the Patriotic League of Uganda. I challenge them. If they can produce anywhere where we are drawing money from the consolidated fund as PLU. Actually, not even the general host gives us money. It is me. So, so when we say Parsid draws money from the consolidated fund and you say it is, it is family, it is not family. Recently, they returned the budget. He knows. Because the president himself came in the... But you see, Odalevo Kabanda, what you want to separate mm. is the utterances between the, the two. two. But then the I element agree with of you. talking yeah. about the 37 billion yes. is a matter that is public resources, which can okay. be commented so, about. We, there, we there, can do, talk do about you think Simon, the country Simon. should get sucked into this Sa bitterness? Absolutely, Simon. Can I... Honor Kwan, if you would allow me. To, uh, Kabanda is raising valid points, just that he's not the past, right person to make these points. <laughs> hey, we are under an occupation by the family. And as he said... This family spends our money. It's passed to them by parliament yes. on behalf of us. Mm. So we should be discussing this family. And at one point, a family ceases being a personal family. This is why we talk about it as first family. We don't have a second family. It's the only first family. And point number two is that Rawogo has taken money fraudulently, as the owner of Kabanda has said. The problem. Not once, that, not twice. Is, not and the problem is that Kabanda and his MK outfit are positioning themselves as the opposition. Okay. What is said. What he's saying are things that have been said by okay, activists. You come out to portray Mawanda as clean. No, we are not portraying Honorable Mawanda as clean. Ca this, ca can, yeah. I, can I play you that tweet? This, yes, you can even... You yes, can, you let, can, let, can my producer bring out that tweet, yes. Mm. Uh, there, is, there is even another tweet where, okay, Michael Mawanda is a political prisoner. He was taken to prison by some politically dilapidated people in NRM for the great crime of supporting... Mohozi Kainerugaba in Bushenyi. So you, I think, I think it's now shifting. Do you know why I must be exonerated and my boss? When the report was being presented on the floor, I am on record, and I don't know whether Honorable Kuizera was in, in the house on that day. I raised this issue myself. I said, right Honorable Speaker, why, why are you forwarding this report to CID when members of parliament have not read it? Let us know who's going to be, who's implicated and who's not. We later found out that some people were exonerated. But when by, you... By who? By, by CID. They, they were not arrested. They are not being summoned. So there is mischief. Yeah, we, are, we have some people in that report, including ministers. It is on record. It is in the report. Min, a minister directed that a union so and so be given five billion and the minister is at large you see honorable i mean <laughs> i raised it on the floor of parliament honorable, honorable and there is Kawanda. a member i'm going to give you information yes. there is a member who is also in that report he told me no no it will be killed from cid so when you say it is only mawanda of one billion modimi of three billion and akamba of 150 million they are the only ones who should be in ruzira and you leave the others I told you here, you hosted me, I told you there is a member of parliament who has failed up to now to account for 44 billion of the cooperative. See, Honorable Kabanda yes, and the members and listeners, yes. there are two things yes, that have come which cannot, which cannot be left like they, that. They like mm. the, the, there the, are one the is that collapse. the issue between the two individuals, General Moz and the, and the Wabgo, we should not have capacity to discuss because we don't have authority on that. No, we do. Secondly, no, for those ones, but for the issue of the 37 billion, we can discuss because that's a public fund. The issue of the report of the cooperatives is a very critical matter because as Parliament debated, 
and adopted. We never and, debated, actually. Okay. But they we just adopted. presented but a report that we adopted. The reporter was adopted. Honorable, please. I want you to look adopted. at. And forwarded. Yes. I want the, you to look at. Uh, wait, if the reporter was adopted, and <clears throat> there are a number of people who are involved, and they are not handled now, I, I, that's another an issue that we should pick interest in. I, I want you to look at. But he's raising something that you're general. not giving. Mm. Not, not necessarily narrowing it to the conflict between him and his brother-in-law. Mm. But in general, does he come off as someone who is throwing pointers that we're not picking as a country? You see, now the Secretary General, who is an authority on the PLU, has learned something. Because in every situation, you either win or run. So I believe that my colleague Kabanda has seen that. Is it the best way to communicate? Okay. If, the, if, the, if, what, if or what General Moore has communicated is an officer in the government, it is, must be, have been picked <coughs> by the relevant bodies who fight corruption and who are now... Well, uh, that's uh, you, Yusuf, that's what I would, Yusuf, I, I would I, believe. Is this just as, part of the as extended you can, as you can see the dramatic smirk, political As you cast. see the smirk on my face, I'm mm. conflicted whether to be happy or to be sad. I am happy that... <laughs> that the internal wrangling is really <coughs> taking shape. I am very happy that the palace is You crumbling. are happy. I am extremely, mm, yeah. <laughs> because we've been occupied for a long time. Are so you happy when the house is so crumbling? If, they, no can, if they can eat themselves mm. and then dis disappear, it should give Uganda's pleasure. Eat, you mean? Yes, because you can see <laughs> they are going against each other and this is the best fight. You see, remember there was an election in this country where a member of the first family and the member of the first family went against each other and they brought guns against each other. This was the most fair election ever held in this country because all of them had equal control over firepower. And something is happening here. This is an internal palace and it should give Ugandans happiness that finally this family which has <laughs> occupied us for a long time is crumbling. But the danger is when it crumbles over our heads, then we'll be like the people trapped under Kites, and Kites becomes a very interesting imagery in this case. That if this family crumbles in this context without proper direction, we are all left at its mercy. And, and you know, so I'm conflicted because I've been very happy for a long time. I've urged uh, MK for a very long time that even if you built your father, a Serena in Ruzira, we will be happy with you. You overthrow him, throw him in Ruzira, Ruzira will be very happy with you. Because for over this entire time, he has done nothing for this country. Mm. So I am imagining so that you I am imagining because I'm no, not a CDF. Of I'm not a position. I mean, that if one. you are in that position, that you he, will be, he will not be the uh, first in history. Uh, no, no, and it's this point. You, you cannot say you can't, uh, that the president has not done anything for this country. Okay. And me as a member of parliament. You, you're going no, to come no, 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 You're no, going wait. to come in. No, no, no. no, no, no that, that, that one you, cannot wait, be accepted. Wait, let him wait, respond. I want to respond to him. Yes. No, but you're being No, 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 that's not correct. No, no, that's not correct. He's the one who has caused the disruption. When you say that the president of the country has not done anything for this country, I would beg that since he's a, a civilized person, he withdraws it. There are things he has done. There are things he has not done. No, but, also, but you cannot say. But also that for him to say, it, just to supplement on what you are done. saying, just to supplement on what you are saying, for you to say the president has done not nothing done for this country, but the CDF should overthrow him and arrest him. But who appointed him CDF? No, this one is the salary Anna and Makere. It is That's the same president saying. who appointed him so, CDF, well, who well, appointed well, him, well, and you well, say well, he has done nothing. You, you take something. the floor now. You take the floor. Take the that floor, Yusuf. Yes. Oh, okay, fine. I'll, Let's allow him to I'll submit. say one more time that one of the biggest uh, wastages we've had to this country is having Yoel Museveni as our president. He has wasted our resources. He has presided over a corrupt system. He has presided over a family which has occupied us. Uh, the family which is the Mnia Gonja told us, thieves hide behind him, Seveni. His son told us he's uh, hanging out with the biggest thief in the country, so he has done nothing. You, you can have your different opinions. You can celebrate what he has done in my position, and the position of his son, he said he's hanging out with thieves. The first son is, the, is his son-in-law is a thief, and he Miyagunja to let thieves hide behind Mr. Seveni. If we can't even manage 90% of our wasted which is organic and is killing people in, here in Chitezi, what has he done for this country? Okay. But Simon, there was a point I was building earlier, that I have, I've over a long period encouraged Mohozi that his father, I don't know if he has understood his father, his father doesn't trust anybody, including any members of his family. This is why he's put on Katebe and, he, and he's, he's aging. He's aging. I think he's 52 now. If Mseven stood for the next five years, he will be 50, 57. For another five years, he will be 60. 
it will be so unfortunate to be so close to power, but you wait for a decade and you grow gray hairs and even start w <laughs> walking with a, a stick and you haven't that, assumed that, the uh, president. Honorable Commander. He stands a chance to become president if he, do, he does what his father taught him to do as a soldier. Well, uh, Honorable, as we get out of here, then it's been a spiral, more of a spiral, one thing after the other. Over the weekend, Uganda's two diplomats were sent packing. Honorable Ruth Cheng from Canada and Honorable Henry Maiga over diplomatic embarrassment. What's your reading into this? Firstly, the one of Canada, I personally disagree with the decision that was taken because maybe the ambassador was responding. Why do you only cons target one side and you leave the other? Because there are also others in Canada who abuse the president of Uganda every day. Unless the government of Canada says, for us we only uh, uh, accept those who abuse the president of Uganda. And the ambassador together with other supporters of President Museveni, whom I have heard this morning that we are also going to be deported, is supporting President Museveni a crime in Canada. Uh, the other one of UAE may be that one we can look into it. But this one is political. You don't deport an ambassador because an ambassador is supporting a certain group. Maybe the other group is... An ambassador goes onto the streets and becomes a heckler? But is that diplomatic in your, in your opinion? It may not be diplomatic. That one I may agree with you. But don't we have other uh, measures of disciplining an ambassador rather than deporting them? Because for you, when you have, when I heard, you had an issue, you went and became an MC somewhere, where you dismissed from NBS. <laughs> they gave you a chance. They said you can go and repent and come back. So an ambassador may have had, <laughs> may no, I'm sorry. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. You'll <laughs> have me so for another day. So this man is day. reducing government of Uganda <laughs> diplomat to NBS TV. Yeah, yeah, in NBS TV, you, 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 I don't know, I think you belong to NUP. NUP was blaming you. <laughs> was blaming NBS for having uh, confused Ugandans with uh, some opinion polls. So you don't belittle to NBS where you had to endure the jam to come this morning. So, my friend, I think there were some other avenues where the government of Canada could maybe say, government of Uganda, can you take your <coughs> ambassador through some uh, diplomatic manners on how these <laughs> diplomatic issues are handled. That one I may not, I, I, I may not. Uh, what, what does it reflect on the state of affairs? On the state of affairs is. Especially in regards to who but, but is appointed. Exactly. To there, I, 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 I think I, we may not be having enough time, but we should also go deeper into what you are saying. RDCs, we begin from the RDCs. So and so has lost an election, so we appoint him an RDC. So and so has lost an election, we, pour, we appoint that person an ambassador. We must find people who can do this job well, not political failures. Because most of these people you see around that have been appointed are political failures. So and so lost a constituency, so where can we put that person? Hey, ambassador, RDC. It is wrong. It is very, very, very wrong to find people who are not suitable for certain jobs because they have lost and they were cut out. Yes. So, so it's, it's he's on your side now. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, he's confused. No, he's, and I don't he know has what, made a point. Listen, I don't know what is worse, mm. whether that uh, Kawanda says the things he says or that he actually believes them. Because That's the first time we are saying it. Because two, after, two, two diplomats because after, are expelled. After defending the diplomat, then he remembers that he belongs to PLU he has to be like member of the opposition, then he <laughs> defends. <laughs> because he remembers somehow that, oh, I'm supposed to speak like I am, of the I am, Simon, I am objective. Si Simon, the point the I point am not like, uh, I'm, I'm not like Serum Kuma, where I'm, everything about him seven is wrong. I, wa I want to salvage a point that <laughs> no, 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 made. I am oh. objective. That for the last so many years, we have lived under this dysfunction for a very long time. The, the dysfunction you see in the appointment of uh, diplomats is not unique to diplomats. I'm telling you, we are at Macquarie University, right? Professors and PhDs. Our bosses are primary school teachers. 
Hmm? The, I'm telling our bosses, our primary school teachers, they have never held a professorial position. They have never you lectured. The chancellor, that is a they've they've never teacher. lectured at a university. Those are bosses. You, the people who the decide. But, but what exactly did you mean? The people who Is decide. Including the chancellor? The, the chancellor. vice chancellor. We don't, have vice, we don't have a chancellor now. And the, the chairman of the council? The, the vice chancellor? Oh, we don't have a chancellor now. How about the vice chancellor? The chairman of the council is Lona Magara. Never taught at a university, never held a professorial position, not a PhD, not a master's holder. And, uh, and, the, and the, the, the minister of education, the minister of education in charge of our institution, in Minister of Education. Not a, not a master, well, maybe a master's degree, never held a professor position, I not a professor PhD. Mingo even even mean, has no idea how university operates. Uh, the head of appointments board is the son in law of Yoe Dumseveni, is, is a lawyer, not a professor, never professor held a professor Mingo position. Is PhD. So, the, the appointment of unqualified individuals, it's a wonderful point that Commander made, the appointment of unqualified individuals. You see, we have an, a guy in charge of IT. You know the guy in charge of IT? Nyombi Tembo. Can't even write a tweet. Doesn't, can't even tag the right people. But he's in charge of an uh, IT ministry. So the appointment of unqualified individuals is not unique to diplomats. It's the national condition we've lived under for a long time. And if I, when I tell you, gentlemen, that one of the biggest misfortunes that ever befell this country is having people who are content, yeah. content you, with you, small you dreams. You invited this man deliberately. Content with small <laughs> dreams and small pleasures. Your content. He's an analyst. Yeah, I'm okay. telling you, Simon, I've told you before that one yeah, of the things that bothers me, <laughs> one of the things that bothers me, Simon, is that you have 30, 38 years of holding a government and you, you love to appoint family members into serious positions. And for the entire time, they are fighting for, they are fighting for public service positions. Okay. How can but the uh, country get over this diplomatic embarrassment? Diplomatic embarrassment? Simon, I've just painted a picture for you that we are stuck in a quagmire where at every position, the people who hold these positions and, and, and are political failures and unqualified. I've told you, when you come to the premier university of this country, Makere, our bosses, not PhDs, no professors, never held a professorial position, primary school, high school people, bachelor's degrees. How do you, the, you know what has been happening at Makere University? They've introduced a thing which works like a clerkship, where when you come in at the beginning of the hour, you clock in, you show your face, they read your face that I've reported at 8 a.m., and then I'll leave at 5. But a university is, is a production of knowledge, where researchers spend time out of the university, but they're working, they work late hours, busting their butts so that they can produce knowledge. They've been reduced us to, to a clerkship, like a secretarial bureau, because our bosses, our primary school, our secondary school, but never held preferred position. So the dysfunction is not unique. I don't know how we get out of this impasse, because I'm t I've told you IT, uh, when you come to, now the diplomats, when you come to, we, we don't have a, a governor bank of Uganda, we don't have a chancellor. We, it's real. You look at Chitezi. What's the problem with Chitezi right now? Is, is people not having technocracy in positions. You have a member who, a, a, a lawyer, who is also often insisting we should work with the master plan. Let's work with the master plan. We are staring danger in the face. And for political reasons, we have Dorothy Chisaka, I don't know what she studied, to be uh, ED of... But <laughs> a ED, I don't know what she studied to is qualify, to refer to be ED of, of a bustling city. Is the, is the a graduate. But the fact that, but we have graduates who are failures. Yeah. So but I just told you, we have graduates of failures. You see, when you sit in the same class to, with to other students. To be fair students. for us, that, that this one now we brought in the But analysis. the point I'm making, Simon, is this, that we have unqualified people politically appointed in every single position of influence in this country. Well, uh, Honorable Quiz, mm. should we treat these two instances in isolation? Which one and which one? Uh, the Dubai and uh, the UAE and the Canada you deportations. See, uh, what, are, what are you useful is saying, you can see Yusuf is incarnated. As we get out of here, yes. yes Yusuf is incarnated with ne negativity. He has not seen anything positive in the government. So when you call him an analyst, you become, you are unfair. An analyst looks at both sides and so comes out with is he the middle position. Is he so he is a knowledgeable person, mm. but he has decided to deploy his knowledge into the negative side only. And as such, uh, very even, I he hope he doesn't teach like that in Makerere, because his students would be like those graduates There's who no are now in, in missions. <laughs> so final on that one, 
respond to uh, what I've said. Don't this one don't is a skill. Me, Diplomacy is a skill. We should not be talking about politics, like uh, my friend is talking about politics. We should talk about issues of production, issues of performance. You cannot tell me a, diplom a diplomat who has been de deported, even when I'm a member of NRM. Those people have a cause to deport them. And how were they appointed, as Honorable mm -hmm. Kawanda is saying? Diplomacy he is said, a career. He said political failure. No, no, no. Diplomacy Some. is a career. Mm. So we should now be looking Some. at the career yes. diplomats. Adonia is not a political failure. What I'm saying, mm. we must look at the career important. diplomats mm. than political appointments. Well, we so need to get out of here. And I want to thank you very much, Honorable Eddie Quizera. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf Serunkuma and Honorable Kabanda for coming to share your insights and analysis on the state of the nation. W what do you read um, as the true state of the nation? Let's continue the conversation online. Good morning. Cheers.